Hello guys! Welcome sa ating Z Knowledge TV. Okay. So, in our previous video, uh, atin nang natalakay o na-discuss yung uh, basic concepts or mga different parameters ng statistics sa ating introduction to data management. Atin din na uh, pag-aralan yung paano ba mag-organize ng ating dataset at paano ba i-present yung ating data by the use of graphical method or different uh, graphing statistical method. And natalakay na rin natin yung pagkuha ng ating central tendency. So ngayon, atin naman pag-aaralan o i-discuss yung uh, importance ng measures of dispersion. So, lahat ng ito ay pag-aaralan natin dito sa ating tutorial. Pero, before tayo mag-start, don't forget to like this video and click the subscribe button para ma-notify kayo sa mga next videos. So, let's get started. Okay? Okay, so let's proceed sa ating third lesson. So, yung... Uh, measures of dispersion. Okay? So, another important characteristic of a data set is how it is distributed or how far each element is from some measure of central tendency. So, there are several ways to measure the variability ng ating data. Although, yung most common at yung most important is yung standard deviation which provides an average distance for each element from the mean. So, several others are also important and are hence discussed dito sa ating discussion, sa ating topic. Okay? So, dito nga, matatalaki natin yung word na standard deviation na kung saan ito yung statistical term that provides a good indication of volatility, which is it measures how widely values are dispersed from the average. Okay? So, dun papas ko yung word na dispersion natin. So, ano ba yung dispersion? So, dispersion is the difference between the actual value and the average value. Okay? So, kung gaano ba kalayo yung data natin dun mismo sa average value. So, ayun yung dispersion. So, una natin pag-usapan na basic measures of dispersion is yung tatawag natin na range. So, range is the simplest and easiest way to determine measure of dispersion which takes into account the highest and lowest values only. So, ito yung formula ng ating range. Range is equal to highest value minus lowest value. Okay? So, here are the advantages of the range. So, una, it is easy to compute. Next, it is easy to understand. Okay? So, Let's proceed sa ating example 1. The daily rates of a sample of 8 employees at the DKTD Incorporated are 550, 420, 560, 500, 700, 670, 860, and 480 pesos. So, find the range. So, sa ating solution, first is determine natin yung highest value at yung lowest value dito sa data set natin. So, yung highest value na nakikita natin is 860. And then, yung lowest value is 420. So, next is solve for the range using this formula. So, highest value minus lowest value lang. So, ang highest value natin is 860. Then, ang lowest value natin, natin is 420. So, ang sagot natin is 440 pesos. So, therefore, the range in daily rate salary is 440 pesos. Okay? So, next. So, next basic measures of dispersion is yung tatawag natin na mean deviation. So, the mean of the absolute deviation of a data about the data's mean is also called a mean absolute deviation. So, formula niyan is summation ng x minus x bar natin or yung mean over n. So, yung x nga natin is yung ating mga data. Then, yung x bar is yung ating mean. Then, yung n is the number of samples. So, but take note, 
na yung strict bracket indicates absolute value. So therefore, yung numerator in the formula must be added regardless of the differences, whether positive or negative. So ibig sabihin, kahit na maging mas mataas itong mean natin kaysa sa ating data, so isubtract lang natin, no? Tapos, negligible na yung magiging sign. Okay? So next, for the standard deviation, this shows how much variation exists from the average. So, the more spread apart the data, the higher the division. So, this is equal to the square root of the variance. So, ito yung formula ng standard division. So, square root siya ng variance. Okay? So, ito naman yung procedures for computing standard division. So, una, determine the mean of the n numbers. For each number, calculate the division or difference between the numbers and the mean of the numbers. So, next, Calculate the square of each deviation and find the sum of these squared deviations. And then, if the data is a population, then divide the sum by n. If the data is a sample, then divide the sum by n minus 1. Find the square root of the quotient in step 4. But take note na yung standard deviation controls the spread of the distribution. The curve is taller when the standard deviation is smaller and flatter and wider when the standard deviation is larger. So, anong ibig sabihin na itong note natin? So, draw tayo ng ating curve. Okay. So, kapag daw yung curve natin is mataas, therefore, ang standard deviation natin is maliit lang. And kapag naman yung uh, curve natin is malapad, Okay, so yung standard deviation natin is larger. Okay, so next. So, how about the variance? So, variance is a mathematical expectation of the average squared deviations from the mean. This is equal to the square of the standard deviation. So, volatility is a measure of risk. So, these statistics can help determine the risk an investor might take on when purchasing a specific security. Okay. So, ito yung mga formula ng ating uh, variance. So, sa unang row, so ito yung formula sa ating samples. Sa second row, ito naman yung mga formulas sa ating mga populations. Okay. So, where x is the value of any particular observation or measurement. Yung x bar naman natin is yung ating sample mean. Yung mu is the population mean. Yung n na maliit is the number of samples. Then the big N is the number of populations. And then yung square ng sigma natin sa ating samples is the sample variance. And then, yung square ng sigma natin sa population is the population variance. Okay. So, let's proceed sa next example. So, find the mean deviation and standard deviation of the data on the amount of time consumed by two students in their gadgets. Okay. So, for the solution, so, meron tayong uh, dalawang data. So, meron tayong 48 and 64 minutes. So, first is kunin natin ng mean. Yung dalawang yan. So, ang mean is 48 plus 64 divided by 2. Kasi dalawa lang sila. Kaya, katibid sila sa 2. So, ang sagot doon is 56. Okay, then itabilit natin. So, meron tayong data na 48 at 64. Then, ang mean natin is 56. So, una natin gawin is subtract yung ating data dun sa 56. So, 48 minus 56 is negative 8. Then, 64 minus 56 is 8. And then, uh, i-absolute value lang natin. So, kapag i-absolute value natin, itong nakuha natin dito, so, negligible na yung sign kung positive man yan or negative. Kasi, lagi siya magiging positive. So, Absolute value ng negative 8 is 8. Then, absolute value ng 
8 is still 8 or positive 8. And then, kunin natin yung sum ng absolute values natin. So, 8 plus 8 is 16. Then next, square natin yung nakuha natin na uh, per absolute value. So, square natin itong 8. So, ang sagot doon is 64. Okay? Then, square natin itong 8. So, ang sagot doon is still 64 din. Then, kapag pinag-add natin yung dalawang yan, so, makakuha tayo ng 128. So, since na ang hinahanap natin sa ating example is mean deviation at standard deviation, so, na natin itong mean deviation. So, ang formula ng mean deviation natin is to So, since na nakakuha tayo ng summation ng absolute value ng x minus x bar, is itong 16, at ang n natin is dalawa lang, dahil 48 at 64 lang. So, divide natin yon So, magiging 16 divided by 2 ay 8. So, therefore, ang mean deviation natin is 8. So, next. Uh, para makuha natin yung standard deviation, gagamit tayo ng formula lang ito. Okay? Then, since na nakuha na natin yung summation ng uh, square netong x minus x bar. So, substitute lang natin yun. So, magiging uh, square root ng 128. Then, yung n natin is 2 minus 1. Kasi dalawa to, di ba? 48 at 64. So, 128 divided by 1. So, magiging square root ng 128. Okay? So, itong square root ng 128 ay katumbas ng 8 square root of 2 or 11.3137. So, ito yung ating sigma or yung ating standard deviation. Next, using this uh, standard deviation, pwede natin makuha yung ating variance. Pag kuha ng variance, i-square lang natin yung sagot natin. Okay? Pag in-square natin yan, ang magiging sagot natin is 128. So, ito yung ating variance. Okay? So, ayun lang. So, doon na nagtatapos yung ating discussion sa measures of dispersion. So, maraming salamat.